counsel? Thank you, your honor. All right, Miss Torres, where I left off, we were at item number 10, and I believe 733, and you said you identified that particular fingerprint with the scene scope? Yes, I did. Have you had training with the scene scope? Yes, we had training with the scene scope. And have you used it, had some experience using it before this case? Before this case, we only had the training that we received, and that was basically it. You say, we, or, you. We as a unit. I can't hear the answer. I didn't either. We as a unit received training using the scene scope. Okay. And who did you receive that training from? Specs. Okay. The manufacturer came out and trained you? Yes. All right. Now, moving on to exhibit 734, card number 11. How did you help in the processing of this fingerprint? I photographed the latent print with a scene scope and I helped with the ninhydrin processing. Okay. Now, when you say you helped with the ninhydrin processing of these items, this would be not for this particular print that is green. Is it fair to say that a green print indicates it's a scene scope print? Correct. I'm sorry. Objection. Leading. It's expert testimony. Sustained. All right. What does the green indicate? It indicates that the latent was photographed using a scene scope. All right. Thank you. Moving on to exhibit 735, card number 12. I helped with the ninhydrin processing. On that particular latent? Yes. Did you assist in processing exhibit number 736, card 13? Yes, I photographed using the scene scope and helped with the ninhydrin processing. All right. Looking at exhibit 737, card 14, did you assist in processing this print? Yes, with the ninhydrin process. So that would be just on this page? This print wasn't a ninhydrin print, was it? No, it was photographed using the scene scope. All right. As far as the particular exhibit on 738, card number 15? I assisted with the ninhydrin processing. Of this page? Of that page. Exhibit 739, card number 16. I assisted with the ninhydrin processing on that page. Exhibit number 740, card number 18. I photographed the latent print using the scene scope and assisted with the ninhydrin processing. And card 741, or I'm sorry, Exhibit 741, card 18. I assisted with the ninhydrin processing. Thank you. Your Honor, if we could have input number one at this time. All right, Miss Torres, calling your attention to only those prints in which you said you were the identification technician who found the prints. I'm now asking you. I'm showing you card number 10, which is exhibit 733. Were you the finder of this particular fingerprint? Yes, I was. And where did you find that print? On item 317, Sam, a penthouse magazine, page 87, quadrant 7 and labeled as latent 1. And that latent 1, what does that indicate? That that was the first latent that we located using the scene scope. All right. Calling your attention now to card number 11, which is exhibit 734, did you locate that print? Yes, I did. And where did you locate it? On item 317, Tom, T. Visions of Fantasy, A Hard Rock Affair, September 1993, page 3, quadrant 4 and 5, and labeled as latent 1. All right, moving on to card number 13, exhibit number 736, did you find that fingerprint? Yes, I did. And where did you find it? On item 317, YY, Al Goldstein's 100 Best Adult Videos, page A, quadrant 15, and labeled as latent 1. And lastly, exhibit number 740, card number 17, did you find that fingerprint? Yes, I did. And where did you find that? On item 321E, Girls of Barely Legal, page 7, quadrant 15, and labeled as latent 1. Could we have the lights, please? All right, taking those four fingerprints in order, I now show you exhibit 769, page 10. Does that show the fingerprint and the location on the page where you found that fingerprint, item 317S, penthouse, page 87, quadrant 7, latent 1? Yes. Showing you now page number 11 of this exhibit, 
does that show the fingerprint that you found on that page and its location on item 317T? Visions of Fantasy, A Hard Rock Affair, September 1993, page 3, quadrant 4 and 5, latent number 1? Yes. Calling your attention now to page 13. Does that page show the latent fingerprint that you located on item No. 317, YY, -Y, Al Goldstein's 100 Best Adult Videos, page A, quadrant 15, latent 1? Yes. And lastly, page 17. Does page 17 show a fingerprint and its location on a page of item 321E, Girls of Barely Legal, page 7, quadrant 15, latent 1? Yes. If I could have, input 1 inch again, your honor. I'm going to bring those images up on the screen right now. I'm going to object, your honor. This is cumulative and 352. We haven't shown these images yet. Overruled. All right. Is this the fingerprint that you located on exhibit number 733, card number 10? Yes. Next, does that picture, fingerprint, indicate the location of the fingerprint that you found on exhibit number 734? Item no, card number 11? Yes. The next slide, does that slide show the location of the fingerprint that you found on exhibit number 736, card number 13? Yes. And lastly, does that fingerprint indicate the location on the page where you found the fingerprint on exhibit 740, card number 17? Yes. Thank you. No further questions. Cross-examine? Miss Torres, how are you? Good, thank you. How long have you been? I think you said you were with forensics for five years with the sheriff's department, is that correct? Correct. Do you have any prior law enforcement training? No, I don't. And you're not a deputy sheriff or a sworn peace officer, is that correct? Correct. And in your five years, have you worked exclusively on fingerprints? I've worked on fingerprints and crime scene investigations. Okay, so the answer would be no, you have not worked exclusively on fingerprints, correct? Correct. You've done a number of other tasks with regard to crime scene investigations? Correct. And you're familiar with the need to properly label and preserve evidence, is that correct? Yes. All right, now, are you a latent print examiner? I am a latent print examiner in training. Okay, a trainee. How long have you been in that capacity? I would say for the last four years. Okay, and are you certified by any organization? No. So you're gaining your experience as a, let me withdraw that. You're gaining your training to be a latent print examiner from your work at the sheriff's department? From work and through training courses. You're also taking some courses? Exactly. All right, in this particular case, you did not do any comparison of the fingerprints, is that correct? Correct. And your job was to pretty much bring the prints up, best you can, and preserve them so that they can be looked at by other people, correct? Correct. All right, now, you indicated that you used the scene scope, which we've heard about before in this case, all right? And how long, let me withdraw that, you're here in Santa Maria, is that correct? Correct. How long has the Santa Maria office of the Sheriff's Department had a scene scope? We had had it only for a couple of months prior to us receiving this case. Okay, when did you receive this case? We were assigned to process the items on, I believe, if I may refer to my reports. Okay, if you can't recall, you may do that. The first item that we processed was, we began processing on September 16th of 2004. Okay. So when you say, when we received this case, you mean when your forensics unit received an assignment in this case, correct? Yes. All right. And you recall having the scene scope for about two months before September 16th? Several months. Okay. About when did you receive it? I would say about five months prior. Five months prior. Okay. Had you ever used the scene scope before you received it? We had had one training day on it, but our scene scope had a malfunction, so it had to be sent back. When was that training day? That was, I don't recall. Now, the Santa Barbara office of the Sheriff's Department also had a scene scope, is that correct? Correct. 
Did they get theirs at the same time? Yes. And did you have training together? On the same day. On the same day. And you're saying, forgive me for asking again, but you're saying you don't recall the training day? I don't recall the exact date of the training day. Roughly when was it? I don't recall the exact month, if that's what you're asking for. So you got the machine about five months before September. So April? About that time. Okay. Could have been May? It could have been. All right. And did you have your training day about the time you received the machine? No, we had the training day before we received our machine. Okay. And then at some point, the machine didn't work. You sent it back, got another machine. When did you get the machine that worked? When did we get the machine to work? I believe about a month or two before we began to process the items. Okay. So July or so of 2004? I would say. Okay. And did you process any prints in any case for the purpose of testimony in court? I mean a real case. Did you process any prints in a real case, before you started working on this case, using the scene scope? No. All right. I have no further questions. No further questions. Thank you. You may step down. Thank you. My mistake. I should have let the bailiff know to have our witness already here. Okay. Our next witness we will be calling is Michelle Shelley. And she's on her way down. And if I could get a black screen again, your honor, please. Thank you. Come to the front of the courtroom, please. Remain standing when you get to the witness stand. Face the clerk here and raise your right hand. I do. Please be seated. State and spell your name for the record. My name is Michelle Shelley. M I C H E L L E S H E L L E Y. Thank you. Good morning, Miss Shelley. Good morning. In 2004. Get the mic closer. Thank you. In 2004, who were you employed by? Santa Barbara County Sheriff's. And what did you do for the Sheriff's Department? I was an ID technician. I worked for criminal records, and then I was brought over to work for the Forensics Division. This particular case, due to my background. And was this case the People vs. Jackson case? Yes, it was. Tell me about your training to become an ID technician. I went to Western Mellon College majoring in criminal history, concentrated in forensics, and I worked for the Delaware State Police for two years. Moved out here to California, and became employed by Santa Barbara Sheriffs. I also have a diploma from the American Institute of Applied Science in Forensics. And have you had any specialized training in the location of latent fingerprints? No, sir. All right. Have you had any on-the-job training in the location of latent fingerprints? Yes, sir. Could you describe that for me, please? Just general working practice with a latent examiner I worked with in Delaware, as well as here with Santa Barbara Sheriff. Okay. Did part of your forensics training include locating latent fingerprints and different processes? Well, let me break that question up. It's compound, locating latent fingerprints? Yes. And did some of your general training in forensic science include processing various items to make visible latent fingerprints? Yes, it did. All right. Have you had experience with cyanoacrylate ester fuming? Yes, I have. Or super glue fuming? Uh-huh. Prior to this case? Yes. On how many occasions? Specific numbers, I can't remember. Quite a few times. Quite a few times? Uh-huh. All right. Can you tell me, what were you called in to do? What were your duties with regard to the case of People vs. Michael Jackson? I was brought in for extra help. I was assisting Detective Spinner and Detective Wittenbrock on processing some of the evidence splitting it up, putting it in plastic sleeves, super gluing it, and then hydrating it. Who was it that was in charge of splitting up the magazines initially and placing them in sleeves? Detective Spinner. Did you assist Detective Spinner in that task? Yes. And who was also charged with the initial fuming, super glue fuming of all the magazines? Detective Spinner. 
And did you assist Detective Spinner in that task? Yes. At some point did you team up with ID Tech Wittenbrock to assist him in his look? In his analysis and checking for latents on some of these exhibits? Yes. And what was your assignment with Detective Wittenbrock? I was assisting him in pulling out the pieces of magazine. Basically to speed up the process, because we had such a vast volume, I would pull them out, pass them over to him. He would then scan them. I would assist in writing labels if we found a print. I would also directly type in our findings into our computer for our reports. All right. And did you assist him or anybody else in the Ninhydrin processing of some of these magazines? Yes, I did. Have you had previous training in using Ninhydrin? Yes, I have. And previous experience in using Ninhydrin? Yes. On how many occasions have you used it, if you can recall, approximately? Again, the super glue. Numerous occasions. I can't exactly recall. All right, all right. I'm going to ask you some specific questions about. There I've done it. About specific exhibits. And we'll go through these fairly rapidly. But I'm going to show you each exhibit. And I want you to tell me if you assisted in the processing of this particular fingerprint or assisted in the processing of the page that this fingerprint came from. Okay. As in an anhydrin that had previously been found to be. Can't hear you back there. Oh, sorry. All right. So, let's look first at Exhibit 1. I'm sorry. Card 1, Exhibit 724. Did you have any part in the processing of this particular page or fingerprint? Yes, sir. I did the anhydrin on that print. Okay. Looking now at Card 727. I should say card 4, exhibit 727. I did the ninhydrin on that as well. Okay. And I should mention that neither of these prints is a ninhydrin print, is that correct? Correct. Moving on to, moving on to card 737, also is card 14. I assisted with the fuming on that particular card. Okay. Assisting Detective Spinner? Yes, sir. Moving on to card 15, exhibit 738. That is the same. I assisted Detective Spinner in the fuming or, yes, the fuming of that card. All right. Exhibit 739, card 16. As well, I assisted Detective Spinner on the fuming of that card. Exhibit 740, card 17. I assisted on the fuming, Detective Spinner, of that card. Exhibit 741, card 18. I assisted on the fuming with Detective Spinner on that card. And Exhibit 742, card 19. I worked on the fuming, with Detective Spinner, on that card. I also did the Ninhydrin with Detective Wittenbrock on that card. But this is a fuming and scene scope identification on this? Yes, sir, it is. Thank you. I have no further questions. Cross? Hi. Hi. You are not employed by the sheriff anymore? No, sir, I'm not. How are you employed now, just in general? I'm currently in the process of returning to my previous job with the Delaware State Police. Okay, and what was your previous job? I was an ID technician for them. All right, so you went to college and studied criminal justice? Uh-huh. Criminal history, I think you said? Criminal justice. Criminal justice. Okay. Did you, while you were in college, do any actual fingerprint work? Yes, sir, I did. And were you employed by the state of Delaware while you were in college? No, sir. I was employed with them after graduation. Oh. So while you were in college, did you do work on actual cases, or did you do work in a class? I did work in a class, but it was on case studies case studies. So it was part of classwork? Yes, sir. So you were with the Delaware State Police for two years? Yes. And were your duties to do things other than fingerprints? No, sir. I specifically concentrated on fingerprints. Just did fingerprints. Okay. And you came to Santa Barbara, and you worked in records for the Sheriff's Department. Is that correct? Yes, sir. I did. 
and records has nothing to do with chemically enhancing fingerprints or that sort of thing. Is that correct? No, sir, it was to get my foot into the door, hopefully to transfer back into my field. Okay, I'm not trying to be rude to you. No, not at all. But in other words, the work that you were doing at Santa Barbara Sheriff's had nothing to do with what you wanted to do, which was be an ID tech. It was a means to an end, yes. And you applied for a position as an ID tech in Santa Barbara? Yes, I did. And other than working on this case as extra help, you did not get that position, is that correct? No, I have since then moved back to Delaware. But in any event, the answer to the question is, you did not get the position in Santa Barbara, other than working as extra help on Mr. Jackson's case? Correct. I'll object as assuming that she applied for a position. Sustained. Did you apply for a position as an ID tech in Santa Barbara? After the Michael Jackson case was over, I applied, and in the process moved to Delaware. Okay, now, having said all of that, have you used the scene scope before you used it here on the Michael Jackson case? Objection, assumes facts not in evidence, that she used the scene scope. Overruled. You may answer. I've had some experience with it. It's not my specialty. Okay, what experience have you had? I have worked getting general education from a previous latent examiner that I worked with in Delaware. Are you a latent print examiner yourself? No, I'm not. And you mentioned somebody in Delaware? Yes, sir. Did that person have a scene scope? Yes, sir. And how many times did you actually use the scene scope in a criminal case? Not personally on a criminal case. I would look at it, getting general education. All right, so the first time you ever used the scene scope in a criminal case was in the Michael Jackson case? Correct. And were you making decisions as to how the various items of evidence should be processed? No, sir. You were pretty much helping and doing as directed? Correct. And the people directing you were? Detective Spinner and Detective Wittenbrock. All right. Is there anybody else on your forensic unit, in your forensic unit, in Santa Barbara doing this? We have, are generally headed by Sergeant Julio Santana, who would give general direction, but he's the head of our department. Okay. Was he giving general? I guess my point is, was he working on this case? He was heading the case. All right. Did he do any actual physical work on this case? Not to my knowledge. Okay. And the direct, the directions that you received came directly from either Detective Wittenbrock or Detective Spinner. Is that right? Yes. All right. Did you receive training on the scene scope from the Specs Company? No, sir. Were you aware that there was a training day held on the, with regard to this instrument for the Santa Barbara Sheriff's personnel? No, sir. All right, no further questions. Just one question. Sure. Miss Shelley, were you the finder, photographer, for any fingerprint of these 19 prints that we've talked about or that have been presented in this case? No. Thank you. No further questions. No further questions. All right. Thank you. You may step down. Call Detective Jim Wittenbrock. When you get to the witness stand here, please remain standing. Face the clerk and raise your right hand. Yes, I do. Please be seated. State and spell your name for the record. My name is James Wittenbrock. W-I-T-T-E-N-B-R-O-C-K. Thank you. Good morning, Detective Wittenbrock. Good morning. Who are you employed by? I'm retired now. All right. And who were you previously employed by? Santa Barbara Sheriff's Department. And what did you do for the Sheriff's Department when you worked for them? 28 years total. Out of the last four years I was assigned as a detective in the Criminal Investigations Division, Forensics Unit. All right. Have you had any training that qualifies you for such a position? Yes, sir. And can you describe that for us? May I refer to a list? Sure. If it would help refresh your recollection. 
limiting to more or less the fingerprints and that part of the forensics detail, I had 40 hours of basic crime scene investigation in 2001. 24-hour fingerprint pattern recognition class put on by the Department of Justice. Another 8 hours in basic crime scene investigation. In 2002, 40 hours DOJ class on latent techniques. And again in 2000 at the DOJ, a latent print comparison class. And have you had some experience, actual hands-on experience in this area? Yes, sir. Even in patrol, we frequently searched for prints and collect prints. Daily duties while I was with the forensics detail, we'd be searching, documenting, recording and looking at prints on a very regular basis. Have you had training in the use of super glue fuming techniques to enhance fingerprints? Yes, sir. Have you had training in the use of ninhydrin as a chemical process to reveal fingerprints? Yes. Have you had training in the use of the scene scope in using it to attempt to view latent fingerprints? I had some training when I was brought back to assist. I went to the Santa Maria lab and spent a day up there with the technicians and went through the process, information on the scene scope. I also referred to the manual. All right. Is the scene scope difficult to use? No. Why do you say that? It's, it's a lens. You turn the switch on and you focus it and you search. In this case, it was searching a page, and it's quite simple. So the scene scope has how many parts to it? It's got the front filter and lens assembly. It has an intensifier tube that attaches to that. And in our case, we attached the digital camera above that tube. So you've got a camera, the scene scope and something else. What did you call it? The scene scope is in two parts. Okay. There's, the first part is similar to a lens with a filter. The second part's an electronic intensifier, amplifier type apparatus, and above that we had the digital camera attached. All right. Is it any more complicated than moving the different pieces around and focusing it to get a clear image? Objection. Vague. Compound. Calls for speculation. Overruled. You may answer. Do you want the question read back? Yeah, please, please. Okay. I'm sorry, a little hard of hearing. Record read. No, it's the focusing would take a few seconds, a few moments, but it wasn't difficult. All right. Did you participate in a search for latent fingerprints on a number of magazines in the case of People vs. Michael Jackson? Yes, sir. And what was your assignment? My assignment was to use the scene scope and search, in my case, several magazines for latents are developing prints on the magazines. And after that, they were processed with the ninhydrin, and then another search of all those magazines I did all myself. Had the magazines that you searched with the scene scope been previously processed in any fashion? Yes, they had. In what fashion? They'd received a cyanoacrylate fuming process, which is commonly referred to as super glue fuming. All right. If I may approach, your honor. I'll show you a few exhibits. Three, to be specific. I show you exhibit number 724, card number one. Can you identify that for me, please? Yes, I can. What is it? That's an image from the scene scope I photographed on item 304D. Using the scene scope? Yes. And can you tell me? Well, I'll get to that in a moment. Showing you now exhibit number 727, card 04. Can you identify that for me, please? Yes, it was item 317, ooh. It was a latent from using the scene scope from page 2. And did you locate that latent fingerprint? Yes, I did. Finally, exhibit number 742, card 19. Can you identify this for me, please? Yes, this was evidence item 363M and this latent I photographed off of page 57. All right. Also a scene scope photograph? Yes. While I am here, I will show you page 1 of exhibit number 769. Can you identify that for me, please? Yes. That, again, shows the scene scope photo from item 304D, page 52, and it indicates where it was photographed on the actual page, where I circled it. And that's where you located that particular print where the green arrow points. Yes, sir. Showing you page number 4 of exhibit 769, can you identify that? If you could turn it so I could read the tag there. Yes, that's item 317, page 2. Is that a latent fingerprint that you located on that particular page where the green arrow points? 
Yes, it is, and where I circled it. And showing you page number 19. Please identify that for me. Okay. That's item 363M, page 57, and it's circled where I photographed it with the scene scope on that page, circled. And that shows the location with a green line where you found that particular print? Yes, it does. All right. Detective, I'm going to ask the court at this time to go to input. Well, if you could just give me a moment, your honor, to download the proper PowerPoint. All right. Could we go to input one, please, your honor? Hit the PC button. All right. Detective, is that card 724, exhibit 724, card number one, that I just showed you? I believe so. I. Okay. I'll leave them up here with you. Okay. So you can refer to them, if you please. And is that the fingerprint that you found on item 304D, barely legal, July 2003, page 52, quadrant 12, latent 1? Yes, it is. Showing you card number 4, exhibit 727, is that the fingerprint that you located on item 317O, Hustler, barely legal, August 2003, page 2, quadrant 11, latent 1? Yes, sir. Showing you exhibit number 742, card 19. Is that the latent that you found on item 363N, Club International, March 1998, page 57, quadrant 15, latent 2? Yes, it is. Going back to the first latent again, does this page, does this exhibit, this is page 1 of, I believe 769 is the exhibit. Is this where you located the latent identified on card number 1, exhibit 724? I believe this is page 52? Yes, page 52. That's correct. All right. And does this exhibit, that is identical to page 4 of exhibit 769, does this show where you found the latent identified on card number 4, exhibit 727? Yes. This is page 2, yes. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's known as, it's on page 4 of that particular notebook that I showed you out of, but it's on page 2 of item 317O, is that correct? Correct. I'm going to object to counsel testifying. It's not a question. Sustained. All right. And finally, showing you page 19 of the notebook exhibit that I showed you, does this fingerprint show the location of the fingerprint that is on card 19, exhibit 742? Yes, that's correct. That's the location on the exact page that you found that print? Yes, on page 57 of that item. Thank you. No further questions. Counsel? Detective, how are you? Good morning, sir. I guess now you're Mr. Is that right, retired? Trying to. Trying to. Okay. Can I still call you detective? Is that okay? Certainly. Having done that for some time, you were 24 years in the sheriff's department before you went into the forensics bureau, is that correct? Approximately. And then you spent the last four years doing forensics? Yes. All right. And you told us about your training. Did you have any training on a scene scope other than what you received from the ID tech in this case? No, sir. I was retired during that time. I believe it was a four hour demo they had. Okay. They had a demo from the manufacturers? Yes. And you missed that one? Yes. And then you went up to Santa Maria, if I understand this? That's correct. And you met with who? Detective Sutcliffe and Detective, Tech Torres. ID Tech Torres, Miss Torres? Yes. And they told you how to work the scene scope? Correct. All right. Now. You told the district attorney that it wasn't particularly hard to do, I think. I don't think it is. Were you familiar with the issues regarding there should be a film camera used or a digital camera used? Actually, I, I actually called the factory and inquired into some of the different cameras. They sell it with digital cameras, and you can use a film camera. When did you call? This was back when I was doing this processing, right at the very first or second day. Were you aware that they recommend that a film camera be used? They sell this camera with low-resolution digital cameras. I'm not aware that they recommend the 35mm or any film camera. That was my question. 
Are you aware that they recommend a 35mm film camera? No. Are you aware that the reason for using a film camera is that there is a better resolution, a better result in the actual photograph? Assumes facts not in evidence, that they recommend a different camera. That's in evidence. The objection is overruled. Do you want the question read back? Try the question one more time, please. Read it back. Record read. I'm not aware of that. I would not agree with that. Okay. Do you know whether or not a digital camera is likely to wash out some of the detail in a print that would otherwise be captured on 35mm film? Could you qualify the digital camera a little bit? It's a very covers a lot of digital cameras. Okay. Well, without talking about particular digital cameras, have you heard of this being a problem in developing latent prints? No. Did you have any training with regard to the interrelation between the process of super glue fuming and the use of the scene scope? I had some. I'm sorry. I don't quite. That's fine. Let me ask you this. Were you aware that with the scene scope, if you overfumed the super glue, you could lose detail? You could overfume separate from using the scene scope. You can overfume that process to where you lose detail on the print. You can over. If you really overfume, you can pretty much just obliterate the print, blot it out. Is that correct? Absolutely, and it would be useless. Were you aware that with a scene scope, you can decrease the amount of fuming and enhance the print more efficiently with less fuming? I think that's a fair statement, yes. Did you know that at the time you were doing this? Yes, yes. Did you have any input to Detective Spinner? Let me withdraw that. Detective Spinner is the one that did the fuming? He did some of the fuming. Did you do any of the fuming? No. Did you have any input into the fuming process to whoever was doing the fuming? Yes. Did you explain to them that they should use, they should decrease the amount of fuming because you were using a scene scope? Yes. And who did you tell that to? That was both Detective Spinner and Michelle Shelley. Michelle Shelley. Okay. And what you want to do? Now, are you a latent print examiner? I examine latent prints. I am not, I was not trained for the comparison part, but as an examiner I do examine prints. So you don't do comparisons? Training. I did a lot of comparisons, but I was not at the level, the top level to actually do the, I was training in comparisons. Alright, so you were a latent print trainee? Comparison trainee, yes. Alright, thank you. No further questions. Detective, if you overfume a print, what is the result? It's a degradation of the clarity of the print, as has been said. It fills in between the ridges. Is it visible? Yes. Have you had an opportunity to look at all the prints, these 19 prints on these cards that we have presented here? I've had the opportunity. I haven't really looked at them in detail. Okay. But you have looked in detail with the three that you testified about? Yes. Any of them overfumed? No. Thank you. No further questions. No further questions. All right. Thank you. You may step down. Thank you. Call your next witness. Sergeant Bob Spinner. Your Honor, at this time I would like to admit into evidence People's Exhibit 769 and People's Exhibit 724. 727 and 742. 742 is the book? 769 is the book. I'd object to 769 on two grounds. 1. Well. 3. 1. It's cumulative. 2. 352. 3. At least one of the pages has not been properly identified. Which page? There was an objection sustained, and there was no testimony regarding that page. I'm unfamiliar with that. Other than four, I'll withhold ruling based on that one objection. The other two objections are overruled, and the 352 specifically is overruled. I'll ask you to consult with each other so you can. You know you're talking about the same page, so that you're on the same page. There you go. Can we do that at the break? Are the other exhibits received? The other exhibits are received. Would you raise your right hand? I do. Please be seated. State and spell your name for the record. 
Robert Spinner, S-P-I-N-N-E-R. Thank you. Just a moment while we put something in the computer. While I'm fiddling, why don't you tell the jury what you do for a living? At the present time, I am working as a part-time employee of the Santa Barbara County Sheriff's Department in the Forensics Unit. I retired from the Sheriff's Department in July of 2000, or August of 2003 after a term of service of 32 years. During that time, I spent from 1986 to my retirement date working in the Forensics Unit at the Sheriff's Department. Is it true that nobody ever really retires from the Sheriff's Department? Obviously, that's very true. Laughter. How long did you work in the Forensics Bureau with the Sheriff's Department? From about the middle of 1986 to my retirement date in 2003. It would be approximately 13 years, I believe. Okay. During that period of time, did you receive any training or education in the field of forensic investigation? Yes, I did. Why don't you walk the jury through that, please? I started my training in basic fingerprints in 1987 when I attended two classes put on by the California Department of Justice, which were latent pattern techniques, and latent fingerprint techniques, are latent pattern recognition and latent fingerprint techniques. I then attended a three or four day school, I don't remember the exact time, down at Cal State Long Beach on an advanced evidence technician course. I had previous experience in crime scene investigation from my time on patrol and did not go to the basic crime scene investigation course when I came into the unit. I then attended the palm print identification class put on by Mr. Ron Smith. Subsequent to that, I attended a basic fingerprint class put on by the Federal Bureau of Investigation. And back to back with that I attended an advanced fingerprint class put on by the Federal Bureau of Investigation, both went a week long, which were conducted at Rio Hondo College in Los Angeles. Subsequent to that I attended an advanced latent fingerprint comparison class taught by Mr. Pat Wardheim. I've taken a fingerprint seminar fingerprint development and comparison seminar at Orange County Sheriff's. I became a member of the Southern California Association of Fingerprint Officers in 1995, and I have attended their two-day training seminar, which is held every October, since then, except for the seminar which was held in 2001 due to the 9-11 incident. I have attended and monitored one of Mr. Wardheim's classes that we had at the Sheriff's Department, kind of in and out of that one, so I didn't really list it, but it was on problem latent print identification. I attended the three-week advanced, the Advanced Latent Fingerprint School held at the FBI Academy in Quantico, Virginia, in the year 2000. And I recently attended, in January of this year, a basic forensics radiology class put on by Mr. David Ashbaugh. I've also attended another seminar conducted by Mr. Ashbaugh, I believe it was 1997. Do you have any other education? I have attained initially an Associates of Arts degree in business, I have an Associates of Science degree in Police Science, and I have a Bachelor's degree in Administration. At the time that you retired, what was your position with the Forensics Bureau of the Santa Barbara Sheriff's Office? When I retired I was the Sergeant and Supervisor in the unit. Does that unit encompass both North and South County offices? Yes, it does, sir. And you were in charge of all the forensics people? Yes, I was. Do you have any professional affiliations you have not mentioned? Encompassing along with the Southern California Association of Fingerprint Officers, which has the acronym SCAFO, I'm also a member of the International Association of Identification, California State Division. Over the years, how many fingerprint comparisons would you estimate that you have done? I would say approximately in the vicinity of 80,000. Okay. Approximately how many came just from the Michael Jackson case? I believe it was close to 21,000 comparisons. Have you ever testified in court as an expert witness regarding fingerprint identification? Yes, I have, sir. On approximately how many occasions? It was approximately, approximately 10 to 15 times. I'm not really sure of the exact number, both in Santa Barbara and in Santa Maria court systems. Does that mean that you've only done comparisons in approximately 10 or 15 cases? No, sir. We're very rarely called to testify in fingerprint cases, and it's, when we do get to testify, it is a rarity. Okay. Is there a requirement by the sheriff's office that you be certified in order to hold your position? No, there is not. So you're not a certified fingerprint examiner? No, sir, I'm not. 
Do you know other fingerprint examiners in other jurisdictions working with other law enforcement agencies? Yes, I do. Is it uncommon for some of them or many of them to be non-certified? Objection. Your Honor. Relevance and Foundation. Foundation. Sustained. Is it uncommon in the state of California for? Let me phrase it another way so it's not leading. Do you know whether law enforcement agencies, as a rule, require certified fingerprint examiners to be employed? Objection. Foundation. Sustained. Okay. Can you explain for the jury, please, what a latent fingerprint is? A latent fingerprint is a fingerprint which is created when your friction ridge skin comes in contact with an object and there's a transfer of the contaminants, sweat and sebaceous oils which are on the top surface of those friction ridges, to the object which is touched. That print may be invisible until it is mechanically or chemically enhanced or processed. And what is a known fingerprint? A known fingerprint is an intentional recording of an individual's fingerprints, not only on a marked fingerprint card, which would have 10 squares across the top and 4 squares on the bottom. 1. The bottoms would have the flat prints and thumbs. The tops would have the complete left finger recordings and the complete right finger recordings. It's only done in ink. However, now, with the advent of better digital electronics, it's done with what we call the live scan method, which is basically an electronic recording of the fingerprints. I'd like to approach and show you exhibit 767. Do you recognize that exhibit? Yes, I do. And what is that? It is the 10 print fingerprint card for Mr. Jackson which was created on November 20th 03. Is that an example of the live scan image that you just explained to the jury? Yes, it is. Okay, I'd like to show you exhibit number 743. Do you recognize that? Yes, sir. This is an expanded version of the original item, which is the fingerprint card. Okay. I'd like to move 743 into evidence at this time, your honor. Actually, I don't think I've been shown this. I understand I've seen the original, but if I could just see the... They're on your PowerPoint, I'm sorry. Let me just see the boards, if I could, quickly. Yes. Thank you. Once again, Your Honor, I would like to move Exhibit 743 into evidence. I have no objection. It's admitted. I have placed in front of you also Exhibit 744 and 745. Do you recognize 744, sir? Yes. Item 744 is a blown-up copy of the 10 print fingerprint cards for Star Arvizio. Do you have a hard time with the name, Arvizo? Arvizo, yes. Okay. Short on letters. Can we move Exhibit 744 in evidence, Your Honor? No objection. It's admitted. And 745, is that one of the fingerprint cards from Gavin Arvizo? Yes, sir. This is the, one of the 10 print cards for Gavin Arvizo. We'd like to move item 745 into evidence at this time. No objection. It's admitted. I'm going to leave these right here. Detective Spinner, Sergeant Spinner, can you explain for the jury, please, what the basic premise of the use of fingerprints for making identifications is? Yes. Fingerprints are formed during the first and second trimesters prior to birth, during gestation. They are permanent. In other words, they will last from when they're formed, prior to birth, to well after death, and three, that they are unique, that no two persons have never been found to have the same exact fingerprint formations. Okay. What sort of protocol do you use when you're conducting a fingerprint comparison? We, the Sheriff's Office, conduct a fingerprint comparison. We use the accepted methodology known as ACE-V, which is an accepted method in the fingerprint community. That's ACE? ACE, dash, V it's an acronym. It means analyze, compare, evaluate and verify. What are the initial steps of the analysis process? Okay. During the analysis process, after the ACE-V methodology, we examine, or the latent fingerprint is examined in, for quality, clarity, and determine what information is available within that particular latent fingerprint. Can the class type be determined? How much level? How much detail is available? How clear is it? Is it smudged or smeared? Can it even be used for a latent fingerprint comparison? Sometimes this can be done fairly rapidly, and sometimes it takes some time. When can it be done fairly rapidly? When it is, when they're clear and when there is, the apparent detail is clear and very highly visible. 
Some latent prints are very badly smeared sometimes and it takes a while to work through them to determine whether they can even be used for a latent fingerprint comparison or not. Is there a level called level 1 class characteristics? Yes, sir. The level 1 class characteristic would be the type of fingerprint pattern it is, be it a whorl pattern, an arch pattern, or the ridge pattern. Did you bring a small diagram with you? No. You left it upstairs? Yes, sir, I did. Okay. And that's just a piece of paper with the different kinds of patterns on it? Yes, sir. It had what's known as, two loop patterns. Loops are broken down into two particular styles of patterns. It used to be called the ulnar loop and the radial loop. In other words, the loop on the ulnar loops would open towards the little finger, and the radial loop would open towards the radial bone or the thumb. Is there anything about a fingerprint that can tell you whether a person is left-handed or right-handed? No, sir. And anything about them that can tell you age? No, sir. Well. Except for little tiny babies, right? Except for little tiny babies. Or when people get aged, when they get quite old, sometimes they lose the fat pad under the print, and the ridge structure gets very worn and very hard to see. Okay. And a fingerprint will never tell you when it was left? No, sir. You cannot tell when a fingerprint was left. Okay. Is there a higher level of individualization within a fingerprint that you look for as a fingerprint examiner? Yes, sir. There's level 2 detail and then level 3 detail. Beginning with level 2 detail, can you please tell the jury what it is that makes a fingerprint unique, level 2? Okay. Well, basically fingerprints are unique, starting with level 1 they're either arches, loops or whorls. Then breaking down into level 2, we have three basic level 2 types of details. We have the bifurcation, which happens when two running ridges either split and form, or one running ridge either splits and forms two running ridges, or vice versa happens, when two running ridges come together to form one ridge. And you have what we call an ending ridge, where a ridge stops, and the ridges on both sides of it continue on. Then there is a dot, which a dot is one ridge unit which should be about as wide as it is long and has one pore structure in it. Is there something you look for in a fingerprint at the level 2 stage that helps you on your way to determining whether you can make a match or exclude a fingerprint as being made by a particular individual? Well, you look for, in level 2 detail only, after you confirm the level 1, you look for sufficient level 2 details in sequence, the same spatial relationships and friction ridges in sequence to allow an identification to be effective. Okay, so you look at the detail and the sequence that it is on the ridge? Yes, sir. You have to take everything into consideration. What if you were comparing two fingerprints and you come across a detail that exists in one on a ridge that doesn't exist on the other on the same ridge? If one positive level 2 detail is found within a latent print and it is not reproduced in the known print, or vice versa, and it cannot be explained by distortion, then it would automatically take the fingerprint out of contention as being an identification. That would be the one dissimilarity rule? Yes, sir. With respect to the fingerprints collected in this case and the ones that you analyzed, can you please explain to the jury where you became involved in the process that we've heard much about so far? When I was called back into the forensics unit for part-time assistance due to personnel staffing levels, I believe it was the last part of July in 2003, I was asked if I would assist with the evidence processing in this case. Okay. Were you involved in setting up the protocol for how the large volumes of magazines and other items of paper would be processed? No, I was not. Okay. Did you have a clear understanding of what that protocol would be? It was shown to me and I read through it, yes. I understood what they were, what was being required and requested. Was it an acceptable process from your point of view? Yes, sir. Okay. What was your role in the handling of the magazines and other items of evidence that were processed for fingerprints? My role started when I obtained the magazine item numbers from the property room. I returned them to the forensics unit, where the evidence bags were then opened. And then what I did was, I first initially took each individual magazine and photo documented that magazine page per page. I then took the magazine and cut the magazine or separated the magazine down the spine or the middle to separate each page into its own individual page. Then the magazine was recorrelated to maintain the page order. The magazine was then subjected to cyanoacrylate ester fuming, which is known as super glue fuming in an effort to develop and stabilize any latent fingerprints which may or may not be on each individual page. After this was done, 
the pages were then either recorrelated or immediately placed into plastic sleeves, which were then placed into binders, and then the binders became the magazine, or book, or pamphlet. So, were you the individual responsible for slicing the magazines up and subjecting them to the fumes from super glue? I cut and processed the grand majority of the magazines. Michelle Shelley processed a few of them at my direction toward the end when we got very busy. Were you working under some kind of time crunch? Yes. We were told we had to have this project completed by December 17, 2003. Once the items had been subjected to the super glue fuming, did you repackage them? They were. After the super glue fuming was completed, each individual page was placed into a plastic page protector, which was then placed into a three-ring binder. Okay. And then those binders would go where? Do you know? The binders were either kept in the Santa Barbara lab for processing there, or they were sent to the Santa Maria lab for processing there, due to the length of time it was going to take to do the additional processing for latent fingerprints. Okay. The deadline you had was in December of 2004, correct? I'm sorry. 2004. That is correct. My astute colleagues here. The teams that were responsible for further developing or examining the magazines and their contents for latent fingerprints in the North County would have been who? Do you know? They would have been Detective Sutcliffe and ID Technician Torres. And in the South County, who did you use? Detective Wittenbrock and Michelle Shelley. And what was the procedure from that point forward, if you know? Once I was through assembling the magazines back into the binder, in the individual page protectors, they were either sent to Santa Maria or they were kept in-house and then processed for latent fingerprints using what's known as a RUVIS scene scope to look for, develop and stabilize super glue prints on the pages. The pages were then subjected to a ninhydrin process to attempt to further develop any fingerprints. When these two processes were completed, the magazine pages were then reinserted into the plastic sleeves, placed back into the binders, and the binders were then correlated by myself, accounted for, and then booked back into the evidence room. Okay. If a latent fingerprint was identified by one of the teams, meaning Detective Sutcliffe's team or Detective Wittenbrock's team, what would they do with that image? Okay. All images which they found, either using the scene scope or the ninhydrin process, were photodocumented. Those photographs were then either placed on a CD disc in Santa Maria and sent down to Santa Barbara for evaluation, or if Detective Wittenbrock photographed the images, he would take the photo card out of the digital camera, go to the Santa Barbara computer, download images in the Santa Barbara computer system. Were those images saved by file number? Yes, they were. Each individual item number, or each individual magazine, pamphlet, page, whatever, each had an individual item number. The fingerprints which were, photographs on those were marked. And when the photographs were taken, and they were saved under a particular, under the file number for that particular item of evidence. How many total images of latent prints did the teams of Sutcliffe, Detective Sutcliffe and Detective Wittenbrock provide you for a comparison? Approximately 706. And out of those 706 potential latent prints, how many did you find were usable to make fingerprint comparisons? 178 were found to be usable for latent comparison purposes. However, some of those were latent palm prints, not fingerprints. Okay. Of the latent fingerprints, generally, could you explain for the jury what it is that, in your opinion, makes a latent fingerprint usable for a comparison? A latent fingerprint needs to have sufficient quality and clarity to locate and identify a sufficient amount of level 2 detail, and it also has, in my estimation, and what I would like to see is sufficient detail to at least show basic level 1 details so the pattern type can be determined. Turning your attention back to Exhibit 743, 744 and 745, did you use the fingerprints cards from the individuals listed, Michael Jackson, Gavin Arvizo and Star Arvizo, to compare against the 178 fingerprints that were recovered that you felt were usable? Yes, we did. Okay. And out of the 178 usable prints, did you find matches on a number of latent prints? We were able to identify 19 of the 178. And you categorized those as positive identifications? Yes, sir. Okay. Were there a number of fingerprints that you did not come to a conclusion about? Yes, there were. And approximately how many, please? I believe there were seven. When you initially began your comparison process, could you describe for the jury the different steps that you took? When? 
Let me rephrase that. That will take you somewhere else. When you initially began comparing a latent print to some of these known prints from the three individuals we named, did you look at them with the intention of going back through the material over and over again? When we first did the, when we first went through the first ones, what we did was we went through an initial evaluation and located prints which we felt could be an identification, and we marked those. And when we finished going through all the prints that came down on an individual CD disc for that day or the two days, then we would go back to the ones that we were interested in and re-review those fingerprints. Okay, so they would get a first look, and then a more thorough look at a later time? Yes, sir, they would. You keep saying, we. Myself and identification technician Lisa Hemmen. When you finally sat down to compare a fingerprint to, a known fingerprint to a latent fingerprint that you were examining, how did you and Lisa Hemmen coordinate that? Well, initially, during the initial evaluation, we were both watching or both looking at a computer screen where the disk, the images were being brought up one at a time. And we each had individual copies of the 10 prints, 10 prints for the three individuals involved in this case, meaning Gavin Arvizo, Star Arvizo and Mr. Jackson. As we went through the latent fingerprints, again, as I said before, we identified some which could be identifiable to one of the three people. We would note that, and then, for a later evaluation. What would happen, during the later evaluation process, ID technician Hemmen would take the latent fingerprint, which we felt was a usable and comparable latent to a particular inked fingerprint or known fingerprint, and make a side-by-side -side comparison set up on a computer screen. We would then go through that side-by-side -side comparison independently, looking for level 2 details and marking that detail with one of us being outside of the room when the other was doing it. After we were both finished, we would then compare our results and see if there was a problem or whether the identification was valid or whether it was not valid. Is that the V part of the ACE V process? It would be, yes, it would be the V process, the verify. What we did initially when we looked at the fingerprints on the computer screen, we were just looking for latents alone with the 10 print fingerprint cards. How is it that senior ID technician Hemmen could mark on the computer where she thought points of comparison were and you would come in later and not see those marks? We were using a program called Adobe Photoshop, and in that particular program you can create what they call layers. She would make two layers. One layer would be her layer, one layer would be my layer. And she would turn her layer on and put the marks down on where she thought the appropriate level 2 detail was located to make an identification, or non-identification as the case may be, for this particular fingerprint. She would then turn that layer off, turn my layer on. I would go in, I could not see her marks. I would then put my marks down. When I was finished, I would advise her of what we did, that I was finished, rather, and we would both get together. She would turn both layers on and we would see if we were in agreement. Is that a fairly standard way of doing things these days in the field of fingerprint comparison is using the computer? Yes, sir. We used to use what they call a fingerprint comparator. It's a visual projection type device where you would do basically the same thing, but it was more mechanical. You'd work on a plastic screen with a water-soluble pen. Here we just basically use a computer and a dedicated program, like Adobe Photoshop, to do the same thing. I'm going to approach you with an exhibit. Let's take our morning break. 